generate publicity and buzz even while searching for a place in a business. She took on the moniker Charlie Baltimore from the cold name of the assassin character played by actress Gina Davis in the 1996 film The Long Kiss the Night. That was my shit. She attended Catholic schools in Philadelphia. Charlie loved to write poetry and got interested in music after listening and got interested in music after listening to classic rappers by Ken and Big Daddy K. When she was bored in school, she wrote lyrics of her own. Her home life was chaotic. However, in the 10th grade, she became pregnant with her first child, India. As a teenager, Charlie suffered four years of physical abuse from a former boyfriend. Even while she was pregnant, she recalls one time her boyfriend had the bedroom door shut and she was supposed to knock, but didn't. She walked in and he and three guys were playing a dice game. She walked out with a black eye. She told Vibe Magazine, after she gave birth to another daughter, Siani, she went through hard times, pulled her life together and obtained certification as a paralegal. Charlie Baltimore's life in the fast lane started when she met Biggie Smalls, otherwise known as a notorious B.I.G., at a party in 1995. Big had recently separated from his wife, vocalist Faith Evans. She best describes Big as very white. He could charm you out of anything, even your clothes. The couple began what turned into a two-year relationship, and despite reports of his abusive ways towards his female partners, Biggie nurtured her musical talent. She called his beeper one day and did a rap on his voicemail. He called her right back and said, did you write that? It's kind of cool You to keep writing. Biggie Smalls playing the hip hop trio that would include himself, Charlie and Jay-Z to be dubbed the commission. But those plans were halted when Big was murdered in March of 97. During that same year, the father of Charlie's youngest daughter committed the S word. A close friend was killed and her father passed away after a long battle with cancer. She contemplated the S word after their calamities, but the single mother of two stepped back from the brink. She said that she's a realist who believes in learning from one's mistakes and tragedies. Plus, she had her kids to live for. She knew she had to keep on keeping on for them and herself. Charlie's runway looks landed her modeling gigs and her name continues to circulate around the music industry. In 98, she contributed a song to the soundtrack of the film Woo called Money with songwriting input from Philly soul veterans Kenneth Gamble and Leon Huff rose to the middle range of Billboard magazine's hot R&B hip hop charts. Another single, Stand Up, cracked the top 10 of the magazine's hot rap singles chart. Charlie Baltimore's unentertainment label debut album, Cold As Ice, was slated for release in June of 99, with some production work from DJ Premier, distribution from Epic Records. Despite the buildup, her album, Cold As Ice, mysteriously disappeared from the radar. The AskMen.com website reported that it was shelved due to creative differences between Charlie and the record company, and further complications. She remained visible to music audiences with both screen and soundtrack appearances in Spike Lee's 2000 satire, Bamboozle, which broadened her recognition. Her personal life took a turn for the better in 2001 when she married Jack Dreeks. In 2002, she signed with Murder, Inc. record company where mastermind Irv Gotti, aka Irv Lorenzo, was perfecting a, commer a commercially savvy variant of music. Gotti exploited Charlie's modeling background. He announced a partnership with the Revlon Cosmetics brand and plans to revive its Charlie perfume in a campaign featuring Charlie Baltimore, I Sleep Beautiful. Once again, she seemed close to a breakthrough. A 2002 album dubbed Herb Gotti Presents The Ink featured Charlie, Ashanti, and Ja Rule on a track called Down For You, a major hit that dominated hip hop airwaves late that year. In 2003, she went on an international tour with Ja Rule and Ashanti. But by the following year, she parted ways with Murder, Inc. Okay, y'all. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.